Alright, welcome everyone. My name is Kurt. I am a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I apologize for my voice. I'm a little under the weather today. Uh, I streamed this last night, the full stream. Uh, it's about an hour and a half is on the channel uh, if you guys want to check it out. This was drawn uh, by my friend uh, Jeffrey Gwynn, uh, who I think is an amazing artist and did a great job on this. And I'm uh, using uh, Clip Studio Paint to uh, flat this. Uh, I usually don't flatten myself. Uh, if you've been a fan of this channel, you know I'm I'm just not a fan of flatting. <laughs> and uh, But this was a pretty simple piece, and it only took about 20 minutes. Um, I, I'm, I'm not the most efficient flatter in the world, but I only needed uh, minimal flatting on this. I, I made, made sure to separate Venom uh, and Spidey and the buildings and the moon, and I think that's it. <laughs> Everything else I just left and, and just painted. But um, at this stage, I'm not too worried about the colors I'm choosing. Um, they just need to be different. And so uh, at this stage, it's not really about the color choices more than it is just making sure that everything is separated so that when I am using the magic wand to make selections, uh, that goes a whole lot faster. Uh, one of the things that I, I don't like about flatting with CSP is that you can't do a point-to-point -point and freehand selection within the same selection. They're, they're two different tools uh, in Clip Studio, and you'll see me using both. Um, if you're wondering why I switch back and forth, it really just depends, uh, honestly, uh, on the angles uh, very often of the lines and just how my hand feels, I will tend to change up the grip just to keep um, a little variation in how I'm holding the pencil and how I'm using the tools. Uh, I've noticed there's a pretty big difference in, you know, how much energy it takes <laughs> to, to hold on uh, to a pen and, you know, repeatedly trace uh, edges uh, versus going point to point. There's a little bit of a different uh, tension on that. And... Uh, uh, my body is very sensitive to, to that, unfortunately. But so you'll see me kind of uh, flip back and forth uh, between the the point to point, like I'm doing now, and then uh, just the freehand mode uh, with the other tool. And uh, this was not. Uh, I don't know if this is like a standard Venom. Uh, I'm out. I'm out of the loop on what is going on with Venom right now. But. Uh, uh, this one, uh, he sort of has this whole big uh, alien abdomen thing going on, too. And uh, if you're wondering what that is. And uh, going into Spidey. And uh, and you might notice, you know, like there, I'm, I'm, I'm going over sections that I've already uh, flatted. You know, if if you do it in, in, in order uh, and just and kind of keep your, uh, you know, you're flatting to one thing at a time, it makes it a little bit easier to, uh, you know, keep those things separated. And, uh, and again, like these colors here are all just temporary in the ballpark sort of colors. And all that webbing, I was, there's no way I was going to flat all that. There was really no need to, uh, I ended up just painting all of that, uh, webbing at the bottom over the top of what he had done, um, for the most part. And, uh, but just, just followed his, uh, guidelines on that. And Venom, of course, can't keep his tongue in his mouth. He's got a, he's like a large dog like that. It's got to be annoying. I mean, it's got to be tough to make, uh, you know, Spider-Man's going to be making uh, quips and jokes. And I just imagine Venom trying to talk with the tongue like that outside of his mouth. And I've got to, I've got to think it sounds funny, right? <laughs> but, uh... As far as the color scheme for this, uh, you, I, I try to keep things very simple. Uh, I, I think the, the most iconic type images are very often just the, the simplest possible color schemes, and I, I, I rely on them heavily. Um, and so uh, here uh, you can see I've moved the flats uh, is down at the bottom. I've set the flats layers reference layer, so my magic wand will, uh, or my auto select tool, will pick from the flats, and I'm painting on a new layer on top uh, that is a base layer. And I'm, I'm starting with that uh, sort of light, uh, desaturated green, 
and I just I, I like the feel of that color, and I, I and I like the way it blended with the blues and everything. I, I didn't really anticipate that it was going to be the color of my sky, honestly, but it turned out that it works out that way. So, um, and um, but yeah, we're rendering now. Uh, I'm using that brush. You can see the name of it. It's like the Krupuk Wash Three. Uh, you can Google that. Find it on Gumroad probably. Uh, it's a watercolor brush uh, for Clip Studio. Uh, that has uh, there's a lot of variance in the uh, the sensitivity of pressure with this brush. Like uh, I can get really, really barely there color, or I can go really dense with it and very thick, kind of uh, all with the same brush. And so uh, you'll see me kind of using that to vary up what's going on here. Uh, here I did a quick levels adjustment just to tint uh, all of the. Uh, the lighting that I'm doing here. And uh, I think I just merged it down. And yeah, most of this was done on one layer. Like I'm, I'm really uh, trying to do more of that uh, myself and rely a little less on blending modes and things. And so um, I like the idea of uh, the, the spider felt like it had the spider on his chest. It really felt like it had some some form to it like it was almost sculpted you know into the muscles and so i really pushed uh the rendering on on the spider and, and on all the venom uh, to really give it some depth and texture and and not just be a you know a decal <laughs> kind of stuck on him um bright specular highlights are an easy way to make something look wet um and that's what i'm doing here on his tongue and uh, I'm 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 only I think I only really used two brushes on this. I got three, I guess, if you count the soft airbrush, uh, <laughs> which I, I'm using here a little bit. Um, I used an overlay layer to tint those a little bit and then merge that back down. Um, but yeah, there's there's also a pencil tool from Ron Chan. Uh, it's actually, I think it's free on his Gumroad. Um, but uh, I, I did some of the details I do with that. Um, but most of this is with that, even this uh, is technically that watercolor brush. I'm not using it very much in a watercolory way, but I like, I like the texture on it. I like the feel of it. And uh, you'll notice that I'm, I'm focusing uh, most of the, the light and contrast, you know, toward his head, toward his shoulders, his face, you know, all those things. Uh, and also his hands toward the end. You'll see me kind of bring them out a little bit more. And I'm trying to brighten and bring forward all the things that are close to us here. I'm basically using that as a map. If it's close, I want to keep it sharp, keep it high contrast. And then as it goes further away, e even within his body, you're going to notice before the end of this that there's some atmospheric perspective in here um, to really give, uh, give it a sense that uh, he's taking up some space here. <laughs> and... Um, here I've switched over to that pencil tool. It's a really sharp kind of uh, textury brush. It's got a different feel to it. Really good for sharp kind of angular specular highlights like I'm doing here. And uh, again, just trying to think about where the light would reflect on all of these little, uh, all of his components here. And then also using that white like to draw out like his thumb and hand from that little section there. But so much of this uh, is just details, um, you know, and I'm, I'm picking and choosing my battles as far as like, even on things like his legs and that thorax and all that stuff, like, I'm not equally shining everything up here. You know, it's like the top of the legs, bits and pieces here and there. That's really what uh, makes it look a little bit more organic and feel a little bit more natural. Um, I see a lot of beginners just, they'll start doing highlights and then just equally highlight all the things. <laughs> and, uh, and it, and it doesn't really look great because, um, when everything has highlights, then nothing does. And so, um, and some of this stuff I end up, I think even painting over, I, I do sort of a, a stronger rim light from the, from the moon toward the end, but most of it comes through.
But yeah, if you want something to appear to be wet or slick, like really thin, small, specular highlights is a, is a good way to do that. You can really see how much I've kind of simplified the background here. It, it, there's basically a bright gradient coming out of the center toward the edges. And uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. The, the whole background kind of builds off of that. And uh, the the glows on the moon, just a uh, quick note, it's on top of the lines. <laughs> on top of the lines. Uh, it's hard to do glows under the lines. And so uh, if you're wondering how to make a glow, get on top of the lines. Now here you can see I'm, I'm, I'm taking that moonlight and uh, thinking about all the places that it would reflect directly off of him. Uh, so like we're, I'm trying to think of where we would see the moon reflect on his skin, basically, and so, um, and of course having those brighter values in the center helps to pull him forward. And I'm not using quite as much of that really bright uh, as we, you know, on the bottom side we get toward the back. You know, it's all a little bit darker. And now we're up to old Spidey, starting about as dark as I. Uh, uh, want to get, uh, and that's acting as my my base shadow, my, my my base color there, and then uh, doing a rim light to sort of integrate him with Venom, um, uh, in the scene. Uh, they both have that similar rim light coming from the top, and then um, went in with a more local color around the edges for just like the general lighting that's coming from everywhere else. And uh, I'm really just, uh, yeah, I'm trying to make his costume look a little shiny here. And I end up using a levels adjustment to tweak that a little bit more and get a little bit more saturation out of it. And again here, like the blue felt a little dead. And so I used an overlay layer to uh, saturate that up a little bit. And uh, I did a little painting over the top on this here and there, um, like on his shoulders, places where I thought it might help, but nothing too crazy. And I had never, I don't think I've ever actually tried doing this the way that I, well, I'm not about to do it yet. I'll tell you when I get there, uh, the atmospheric perspective. But uh, here I'm taking uh, white and uh, very, uh, I'm sprinkling white around, okay? Uh, white as a as a color in something like this is very very powerful because obviously there's nothing like white. <laughs> uh, it's very unique, and so uh, I, I tried to keep it uh, very scarce in order to uh, really make it stand out. So here, what I what I was what I was about to say. Um, I put a normal layer on top, uh, this you know kind of uh, grayish yellow, uh, and to give him a sense of atmosphere that there was like a, a haze and then I'm basically going in and just pulling him out of that. So I'm, I'm now in a mask removing um, the haze from all the places that are closest to the camera. So, um, you know, that, that big leg in the front, the, the pointy legs that are coming on the right, obviously Venom himself, all that stuff. And I'm leaving the uh, that haziness in uh, in the background uh, in those elements. And what that does is it uh, creates a little bit of depth and atmosphere, obviously, in order to, uh, you know, just make it a little bit more interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, end up, yeah, I think I end up brushing away a little bit more of that. But, um, and on this, again, the backgrounds are... are uh, are, are a little loose, and so I'm keeping the colors loose. I didn't bother flatting. I didn't bother selecting a bunch of stuff. Um, sometimes it helps to just uh, keep it loose. And then you've got the contrast of tight foreground characters. Venom, Spider-Man, obviously, are drawn very uh, intricately and detailed, and the building lines are much less looser, much more <laughs> loose, I guess what I'm trying to say, uh, and uh, not as detailed. And so uh, I'm just trying to match that. And on the webbing, which I think I'm about to start, I think I tried a couple different things before I decided on it. Uh, but yeah, I started with this sort of neutral 
sort of blue as a as a base and this is going to act sort of as uh the foundation for most of the webbing colors and then what i'll end up doing um is switching to some lighter colors uh on top of the lines and just uh sort of drawing the webs over the top in this case which is uh you know if i didn't know geoffrey so well i probably would have called him and said hey i'm going to paint all over your webs but I know he trusts me, and I know that uh, I know he wouldn't mind. All he wants is a good drawing at the end of it and some nice colors. And how I get there, I don't know if it matters that much. <laughs> but uh, uh, here you can see, uh, again, I've gone to that pencil tool. It's got a little bit of grit, a little bit of texture to it, which I thought would be nice for the webbing. And uh, this also sort of doubles as painting out uh, a lot of the black in these in these we in the webs which is not really what i thought would 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 uh ultimately make this look best and so um by going over that it really lightens up the webs a lot and i think i do another i do one more level i think of highlights on this um of specular highlights i guess you could call it for the brightest highlights on all this webbing uh, and, uh, and I'm being pretty loose with this, um, because, you know, it's a spider web. It's not meant to be, um, perfect, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, here, what am I doing here? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to lighten some of the back, some of that up. And then now I'm going in, uh, again, one more time, a little bit more scarce, a little bit brighter and, uh, Again, that really brings out the webbing, it makes it look like it might be slick and stringy and made of something uh, gooey or something. And so uh, that's what most of the this whole section is, <laughs> just webbing. And uh, I do think I end up, yeah, I end up using an overlay layer clipped to the webs in order to shift them all a little bit toward blue. Yeah, just like that. And that really brought the webbing out. Um, and I, I thought it worked well with, uh, with Venom's colors, spreading the color around as, as, as Bob Ross used to say. Again, a little bit more on top of the lines just to, uh, set him apart from everything else there. And I think we're coming into the end, I believe. I think I desaturate these. I desaturate these buildings. Or I did it earlier, I think, actually. Yeah, I put a little bit of red in the background just to help kind of echo the bit of red that's in the center of the image. And again, brightening Venom up there, because at that angle, that, that moon would be reflecting hard <laughs> off, off of him. Uh, he's basically like a mirror uh, at that angle. But I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this time lapse. Um, and uh, I want to say, if you're a fan of this channel, thank you so much for watching. Um, using a, oh, That was a, a curve adjustment there, by the way. But um, the uh, I'm hoping uh, to get into more of a... Uh, uh, of a cadence with my videos, more of a schedule next year. Uh, I've personally been going through uh, some uh, some mental health issues, some personal issues, some physical issues. It's been a weird year, and uh, but I thank you guys for uh, hanging out with me as much as you do. And uh, do check the description. I've got courses on coloring with Clip Studio, Procreate, uh, Photoshop, of course. Uh, there's some color theory stuff. I've got a lot of things that uh, really what makes this channel work. And so uh, I thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.